It is a very warm Total Football welcome to Mathieu Flamini. Great to have you. I, I love that you were smiling as you were watching that back. Scoring against Liverpool, of course, as you know. Arsenal have got Liverpool this weekend as well. Um, thank you so much for, for coming in. And aside that storied playing career you've had with Arsenal and AC Milan and, and others, we know that you're a big climate advocate and you're an ambassador for Green Football Weekend as well. So we're going to take a little bit of a, a journey through your journey, and thank you for going deep into the camera roll for this one as well, for sharing some of your personal photos. So just tell us, what was your first experience or memory of, of any kind of environmental issue in your life, Mathieu? So first of all, uh, I mean, I remember a long time ago, um, going to the sea with my dad. My dad used to be a diver by passion, and uh, he used to take me with him when he used to go and dive. So, um, and I remember those, uh, those collectors of plastic on a beach, mm. For hours. So already at the time, I was very much aware of the, the impact of the humankind on, on nature. And since then, you know, like I grew up in a direction of hoping to be able to, to bring my small contribution and to tackle climate change because it is something which impacts all of us. It really does. Uh, you mentioned ocean pollution there. Let's just take a, a little stroll here. That's one thing, plastic pollution. But ocean health as a whole, what, why is it so vital for our planet? For those who don't really follow the issues quite so closely as you do, just explain that. Here we are, surface against sewage, you're making a pledge here to protect the ocean. The lungs of the planet, they are so important for us as well, aren't they? Of course. I mean, we say that if the ocean dies, we die. Why? Because obviously we need the oxygen from the ocean. The ocean also helps to regulate, you know, the CO2 emissions. And we also, with fish, I mean, we, we, I mean the sea is providing a lot of food for, for, for everybody. So it is very important to protect it. I mean, we talk a lot about plastic, which is, of course, important. But the question is also what is inside the product we use every day. Mm. Because plastic is one problem, but also all those ingredients which come from fossil fuel, it's, it's another big issue. Yeah, and, and we know that right now we're just not taking care of the ocean very well. We, we need to make it simply a, a better impact. I love this image here. <laughs> here you are with Mesut Ozil, your teammate at, at Arsenal, and, of course, now Prince William. Um, just, just tell us a little bit about this, Mathieu, because, you know, you were at Arsenal together. Just come forward a little bit. Um, how much did actually being at Arsenal help you sort of have a positive impact in the world? How did it harness that passion? Because I've always felt that Arsenal are a team with, with, with soul. They, they care about doing the right thing, having a positive impact. So how did that help hone that for you? I mean, it's true. I mean, playing for Arsenal, I mean, we've always been pushed to, to engage with, uh, with the football community. Arsenal is doing a lot for the, for the, for the community around, around the club, trying to unite everybody, to bring, trying to bring people together and to also stand up for important causes. Here we were united together for social causes, which are very close to Mesut Ozil Heart. Yeah. And um, I think athletes have a, have a social responsibility. Clubs, big institution in football. I mean, football is still one of the, the last uh, community, one of the last industry. We still manage to bring people together, to unite people. And I think it is our duty to stand up for our passion, to stand up for our beliefs. And my beliefs and something which is close to my heart is sustainability, is climate yeah. change. And, and I strongly believe that we all have the power to, to act and small changes put on a big scale, we can have a, a big impact. And in terms of you as a footballer, but you also starting your career in business, how did you balance that at the time? You know, trying to spend time, you know, training, playing, etc., and then also developing what's now ended up as GF Biochemicals. So let's, me, let's make it very clear. When you play at the, at the highest level, I mean, you need 100% commitment. But the reality is also like rec recovery is very important. And we have some, some time off during the day. So for me, it was an escape. It was an escape to be able to change my mind, to move to something different, to potentially leave my problems in a dressing room because a career is made of up and down. Sometimes you're injured, sometimes you don't play. So it was for me an escape to, to clear my mind, change my mind. And it's also, it was a passion since a very early age. So I wanted to to leave my passion also off the pitch and to be able to slowly, slowly move also like to what we call a second career because yeah. also being an athlete and a football player, you realize very quickly that then by 35, 36, you know, you need to reinvent yourself. So um, I started like 12 years ago while I was playing for AC Milan at the time to slowly, slowly, you know, build uh, this, uh, this company and also like express this second passion. That's why, you know, I always, uh, I always push other athletes which have passion to express it and to yeah. also like stand up for it. Yeah, it's not just about staying in your lane as a footballer. Um, it's about using your voice. I mean, just tell us, I love this, by the way, this shot of you in a set. I wish our set looked like this. Mm -hmm. From the planet, from the pitch to the planet, a lesson in, in metamorphosis. Um, what... What responsibility does football have when it comes to the environment? I mean, you, you're using your voice, but what more can players, can clubs 
can leagues, can federations do when it comes to tackling climate change? I think, like I was saying, what I love about football and sport, you know, is one of those industries which manage to bring everybody together, unite everyone. I mean, from different religion, different culture, I mean, different background, you know. So this is the beauty of sport and football. And I feel like football has an important role to play in, like, communicating, creating awareness and standing up against, you know, climate change. Because, like I was saying, I mean, it doesn't always, you know, like, uh, affect people who care about the planet, but it affects all of us because the reality is, if you break down, you know, what is climate change? We also talk about pollution. Mm. We also talk about the impact of plastic on health. Mm. When we eat fish, you know, like the fish is basically also carrying plastic, you end yeah. up like in our body. So it's all related. And um, I strongly believe that clubs, big institutions, but also football players, we all have a social responsibility because the reality, we have a huge platform. Social yeah. media today is playing such an important role. Yeah. We need to use our platform to basically create positive change and inspire you know, the next generation to do the right thing. When we talk to fans about, about this issue, it's not the easiest conversation, I've got to say, Mathieu, and, and one of their frustrations is travel. Mm -hmm. As you know, it's, it's the single biggest contribution to football in terms of carbon emissions. What can football realistically do as an industry to try and tackle that aspect of climate change, travel as a whole? Because, you know, fans will be travelling up and down the country this weekend and, and a lot of them will be travel, you know, in, in a car, probably a petrol or diesel car. Obviously, we want them to try and use trains. We want them to try and not fly. So can football have a greater lobbying role, I suppose, in that respect? I think we can. I think we can. And, and first of all, it's not about pointing at anybody. No. And it's a journey. So nobody is perfect. And it's about starting the journey. I think it's also about having an holistic approach. It's not only about the, the transportation. It's one of the important aspects. But I remember the time when I used to play for Arsenal. We used to go to Liverpool, to Manchester. We used to take the train. Yeah. So, I mean, if we used to do that, I think it is possible for the fans. Yeah. It's also putting more pressure on government. Government yeah. needs to also make it available for the fans. Football yeah. clubs need to make it available for the fans to have a greener options. Yeah. We talk about also like with a green football future and you can go on a website and you can choose like a, a vegan option. Why food is so important? Because yes, it's important for climate change. Yes, it's important for the planet, but the reality it is important for our health. I mean, I've been a professional football player and I've been a vegetarian vegan for a long time because mm -hmm. he has been helping me to recover quicker, to perform better on a pitch. So the reality is like having like a vegetarian option, it is first more important for yourself and then it is important for the planet. So there are all those little, I would say, quick wins which football clubs can implement and help the football fans, you know, like to go on a, a, a greener journey, I would say. Um, I'm going to say some words that I don't think have ever been said before on Sky Sports News. Levulinic acid. <laughs> this is what you do, right? This is what your company makes. This is what could make a big change in the world. Really briefly, because we're, we're a little short on time, Mathieu, what, what is it? Why could it be a game changer? I'm going to make it very short. I think, <laughs> like, what people need to know is, like, in a product we use every day, going from shampoo, shower gel, detergent for the house, most of those products are still today made of fossil fuel ingredients. Right. So what we do at Jeff Biochemicals, we are replacing those nasty ingredients by plant-based ingredients which makes the end product, so the shampoo, the shower gel, the detergents of tomorrow, much safer and much sustainable for everyone. Right, there you go. And that can have an impact the number of things that, that that could apply to. Green Football Weekend campaign reaching its climax this weekend. It's aimed to engage fans in positive climate action. This is how it works. You go to greenfootballweekend.com, sign up for your club, get involved in planet protecting activities, line wash your clothes, line dry your clothes, ditch the car, walk to cycle to school, uh, eat a vegan or veggie meal. Each of those activities scores green goals. And then whichever club has the most green goals by the end of Monday wins the Green Football Cup. Let's have a look at the latest standings. This of midday today, Manchester United are top a good 800 goals clear of Northampton Town of League One. Leicester, Chelsea, Brentford are all north of 1,000 green goals and Forest Green Rovers of League Two, greenest club in the world, round out the top six. Let's get a sense now of what clubs up and down the country are doing to celebrate Green Football Weekend before we once again speak to our guest, Mathieu Flamini. So let's start off then with the Premier League and what is going on in England's top division. So... 
Brighton are working with a startup called FC88 to use uh, an upcycle misprinted kits into other items. Crystal Palace installing solar at their academy. Newcastle offering free public transport uh, with a match ticket for the Luton game. On we go to the championship. Uh, Bristol City, by the way, have got a uh, surplus food trip after their game against Leeds tonight live on Sky. Swansea City doing a litter pick on Swansea Beach. And West Bromwich Albion have launched their Baggies Pastures Green Steering Group on environmental issues. In League One, Exeter have got a clothing donation bin for children's charity near their ground ahead of their game Bristol Rovers. Wickham are upgrading the stadium lights to LED. Wickham have launched their sustainability strategy as well. Into League Two, Bradford staged a ready, steady veggie cook-off with uh, players at a local plant-based Michelin restaurant. Uh, Forest Green Rovers do a lot. The match ball uh, for their game against Colchester is travelling there by Bamboo Bike, courtesy of uh, climate advocate Kate Strong. And also, Walsall did their dedicated game to Greenfoot weekend against Sutton last Saturday. They had a green menu served at Food Kiosk. At WSL as well, Aston Villa have a, food, a football rebooted donation point for old football boots at their game against Bristol City. Chelsea doing a flip menu for their game live on Sky against Everton on Sunday, which means you have all the vegan and veggie menus at the top, 90% of them, the rest of them eat. Right, let's talk to Matthew from Ian about Green, Green Football Weekend. I mean, it's a great initiative. How important is it to unite football in this way in the name of climate action then? I think it's very important. And it's very important to also like bring it as an agenda. You know, like uh, we're talking about such an important issue and it's about empowering like uh, uh, all the fans, the football fans. I mean, we're talking about a community of three billion people. And if you are able to have like small changes multiplied by three billion, I mean, you can have a massive impact. So already talking about it, being able to bring it as an agenda, as like I've seen like a few football clubs are, are developing a strategy. This is very important because it is a big topic. Let's talk about Arsenal while we've still got you for a few more minutes, Mathieu. I mean, big, big game this weekend, Arsenal against Liverpool. How, how critical that Arsenal at least don't lose that game on Super Sunday? I mean, at this stage of the, of the season, I will say that every game is critical and uh, it's important to, to not to, to, to look too much forward, but to focus on the next game. Obviously, like we're talking about Arsenal, I mean, Liverpool, this is a big game. I mean, we need those three points, but... I think the team is, is very focused and the team has a lot of consistency and also Mikel Arteta has been able to, to bring this team back together, you know, to bring for all the uh, Arsenal fans, you know, a lot of proud. So this is important, but yeah, I mean, it's a crucial game, I have to say. And what about the job that Mikel Arteta is doing overall at the Emirates and how crucial that he stays at the Emirates long term? I mean, he has been doing a great job. I mean, the first thing he has been able to do is like to unite you know, like the, the team, the club, the fans, which has been like a difficult moment for everybody for, for a long period of time, to bring proud also, you know, when you're an Arsenal fan. I mean, for a long time, it has been difficult to be an Arsenal fan. So this has been a major achievement. Then also to bring consistency, you know, having a manager which is able to, to come with his, his, his way of, of dealing with, with the team and he like to start like working with the team, to growing the team and bring people together, the players together and give them the time, you know, like to move in the right direction is very important. And I think we have seen an excellent season last year and we hope this year another excellent season and why not maybe like dreaming, dreaming bigger. And what about the, the alumni, especially around your time at Arsenal, the likes of Cesc Fabregas now at, at Como, you've got Jack Wilshire coaching the under-18s, Per Messacker running the academy, Edu sporting director. What is about Arsenal that is kind of making these players have a, a really good second chapter in their careers? Yeah, I'm very proud also to see the ex-players being very close to the, to the, to the team, you know, like with Per, with, uh, with, with Mikel now in the, in, the, in the first team. I mean, it is very important, I think, like to, to keep those old players, you know, like close to the clubs yeah. because they have been part of the history and they are also understanding the DNA of the club. So this is great and it's great also to see all the teammates like taking the direction of potentially one day being like a, a top manager of the Premier League or, or, or the club. So it's, uh, it's great to see all this. Can we tempt you back to football, Mathieu? I mean, you know, you're involved with this and that's awesome. But, you know, could you do your own project? Could you launch the, the, the foreign forest green rovers or something like that? You know, something grow up from, from scratch. Do you still have any ambitions to, to get involved with the beautiful game? You know, I've started playing football at the age of five years old. So football has been my, my life. Football, football has been my, my, my DNA, you know, like this is who I am. I've been a football player. I've been an athlete for, for so long. So I'm never far away from football. I still follow the games. We don't know what tomorrow will be. We made made of, you know. So um, we never say never. But uh, so far, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm yeah. very busy. But I hope, you know, to be able to 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 bring more of those sustainable, you know, like initiatives in football yeah. because I strongly believe football has this power to change things and to create create a massive awareness. It, it really does. It's got such a platform and so culturally relevant and resonant and important as well. Mathieu, it's been such a delight speaking to you. It's gone by so quick because you're going to be at the Emirates on Super Sunday I will be. for Arsenal against Liverpool. Enjoy it if you can. I don't know how hard yeah. it is to, <laughs> to watch it from the sidelines. That is the big game on Super Sunday. <laughs>